Okay, so one of the things that I teach as a teacher, and uh, I'm going to give this information in power school as well, is I teach reading strategies. I don't just say, hey, read the story and then it's over and then hopefully you learn something. Um, I teach reading strategies for every genre of thing that you read. And these are skills that I really wish my English teachers had taught me when I was going through middle school and high school, because if you have a strategy and you have some good foundations and some things to look for while you're reading, you're more likely to deeply understand the text and to be able to make uh, big connections and big inferences and to learn really deep lessons as a result of reading. Whereas if you just read something and you get it over with, um, you may or may not take anything away from it. And um, the level of complexity of the texts nowadays is very high. And um, especially if you're trying to do well on the SAT, uh, when you reach, you know, your junior and senior years, and also if you're trying to do well in the PSAT or sophomore year, you really have to be a savvy reader and have strategies um, in place so that you know what you need to do. So this is my introduction to what is called lenses, patterns, and deeper understandings for fiction. So when I read a work of fiction, <clears throat> even for pleasure, it's crazy, but I do these strategies even when I'm just reading stuff on my own for fun. What I want to do while I'm reading is I try to look for clues about what characters are thinking, saying, and doing. So anytime I come across a character and they're thinking something, they're saying something, or they're doing something, I have an idea that the author did that on purpose and that I probably should pay attention to that kind of description. Secondly, when characters or conflicts occur between characters, that's another thing that I know the author purposely put that conflict in there because that is part of the artistry of writing fiction is that conflicts occur. So anytime conflicts happen, I take a note during reading, either mental or in the case of your assignment today, you'll actually like just make a little bullet point of the conflict that you notice. Conflicts can include conflicts between characters, it can be uh, conflicts within characters where they have to make a decision between two things. It can be conflicts between character and society or societies versus societies or whatever. The conflict basically is the foundation of any interesting story. So when you come across a conflict while you're reading, it is in your best benefit to um, make a mental or in this case, a physical note. The next thing that um, I do while I'm reading is I pay close attention to descriptions and details, colors, and then if I see something more than once, I'm like, why did the author do that? If I see the color black to describe more than one thing, or I see the same object over and over again in the story, I ask myself, like, why did the author do that? <clears throat> so key details, colors, imagery, the weather, are all things that you should be looking for when you're reading works of literature. You know, um, people ask, well, why? Well, there's a lot of archetypal patterns, patterns that people use over and over again to indicate certain things are the case, like the color um, blue maybe being associated with the ocean, or sometimes it's associated with nobility, um, or the weather. Sometimes when it rains in a work of literature, it's meant to show that um, things are being cleaned or that it's baptism or something like that. And then the, thereafter, the world is cleaner. Sometimes uh, like rivers, sometimes are metaphors for the passage of time or crossing a river might be a metaphor for a gateway that a character has crossed, a threshold that they've done. So all of these things have uh, a propensity to be evidence to bigger ideas that the author didn't explicitly state. Which then brings us to other parts, is if you read something that the author put and you go, hmm, why did they suddenly change the perspective? Or why did they suddenly change the time and place that the story is taking place? Why did they do a flashback or a flash forward? Or, hmm, why did that one line seem to resonate for me in the story? 
those are things that that strategically you should kind of be looking for during reading and that is essentially what lenses refers to is during reading these are the textual evidence things that you should actively be looking for and you will find the clues to the deeper meanings of any work of literature as a result of looking for them which then brings us to the next step being a good reader is also about asking questions and this happens both during reading but also after reading and one of the questions that you should kind of have in the back of your head and that you should try to answer once you finish reading is you know what conflicts were revealed and between whom? Another uh, question you should also ask is, hmm, now that I've read the whole story, what were those details earlier in the story that foreshadowed things later on or set the mood, um, which is the emotional setting of a story? And then last but not least, like you should kind of ask yourself during reading and after reading, like what was the, per what was the author really getting at by putting together these, these elements? And so that this pattern step takes kind of during reading, asking good questions during reading, but also immediately after the reading. And now notice this is SAT questions. These could be any questions uh, for reading, but most of the time when you're tested on a formal test or you take a literary analysis class later on in your career, like if you take uh, AP literature and composition or any of the collegiate connection classes we offer, you always have to answer questions about the theme of a story. You always have to ask, if, you know, you're going to be questioned about what the mood of it or what symbols, events, any one of these types of things are the types of things you'll be asked about in a formal sense. But after you're done reading, you should ask yourself these questions. What lesson, moral, or statement about life did this story teach? What was the purpose of this story? Um, what were things that taught us about the mood of the story? Um, but long story short, these are your stereotypical textbook questions that you'd be able to, that you're supposed to be able to answer after reading um, a text in a, in a grand sense. Now, remember that when you answer these, you should use evidence from when you are gathering things during the lenses phases of reading. Like you can't, you shouldn't just say the story taught the lesson that and then you insert your lesson, and then that's it. You know, you're gonna have to give textual evidence to support your responses to those things. But that is what lenses, patterns, and deeper understandings are in a nutshell. And when we read the next story that we're gonna be reading, I have a graphic organizer for you to follow as you're doing that. But that is essentially what lenses, patterns, and deeper understandings refer to uh, in the context of our class. And we're gonna actively look for these things in, with regard to fiction. Thank you.